Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds bar. In other words, we say, we tell it like it is. But today, we have four panelists, four topical issues. I'll be explaining how our government has tortured its citizens with a lack of basic infrastructures, such as roads. I'm asking, is Badagri Lagos? On the other hand, Aisha, my dear sister, is dissecting our voting pattern as Nigerians. Do we vote out of fear or out of conviction, she's asking. Hmm. Bolahan sheds light on our country's business management. And he's saying if our government cannot run a business successfully, they definitely can't run a refinery. But definitely, Bolahan knows that I have a contrary opinion. Last but not the least, Treasure tells us as Nigerians to normalize honesty and stop being religious away. Well, make no mistakes, we are changing heads sent to sow seeds of productive thinking for a better society. Allow me to lead the way right after the break. Roll with us. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Edo is not Lagos became a slogan in the last Edo governorship election held September 19, 2020, even though we moved from Edo into Lagos in droves daily in search of better life. Definitely, Edo can't be Lagos, even if both states share historic similar similarities. But should Edo work hard enough on its infrastructure, maybe someday it might be like Lagos. But my question today is, is Badagri Lagos? It took me a journey from Lagos to Badagri and subsequently from Badagri through Agbara industrial layout to Otta via Igbesa, both in Ogun State to realize that Badagri is no longer Lagos or Nigeria. In fact, the deplorable state of the roads in Aba and some many other parts of the country are child's play compared to the state of the Okokomaiko to Badagri Road. A pregnant woman will surely have a miscarriage if she dare travels on that road. And no matter how good your car is, it can't last three trips on that road, I bet you. Mind you, the first story building in Nigeria was built in Badagri in the year 1845 as a mission house for slave masters with a holding place for slaves also. The town ordinarily is a historic one with a federal French college and also used to boast many tourists usually who were eager to reconnect with the slave trade history from the slave parts, the chains, to the point of no return, and then the relics of that inhuman torture and journey called slave trade. One really needs to see these things to understand what Africans went through in the hands of slave masters. But more than 100 years later, the state slave masters has gone though, but our leaders have worn their cloaks and are still torturing us with the darts 
of public infrastructures, in humanity, and public stealing. Apart from the historic slave museum in Badagri, the town is the, also the gateway into Nigeria from the West African subregion. While the Benin Republic side of the road is motorable with proper security arrangement in place, as is hell on earth with several checkpoints harassing motorists for contraband goods and the usual gunja. Pull over, park, wait till you carry, or guy, your boys are here. Today, tourists have deserted Badagri sites as a journey on the 60 kilometer Okokomaiko to Badagri Road is like the biblical camel passing through the eye of a needle. As same usually lasts for between five to six hours. What will it ordinarily take to fix this road within a year, if I may ask? Who causes us like this? Even the indigenous and residents of that area have cried their voice hoarse, calling on government to fulfill their promises to them, even though they pay taxes. Lagos State Government is said to be responsible for the Gomu Okokomaiko section of the highway and awarded a contract for the rehabilitation of the road in 2008, that's about 12 years from now, while the federal government is handling the Okokomaiko, Agbara, and Badagri of the road at a cost of 63.023 billion naira awarded in 2019. Yet, body contractors are nowhere to be found apart from their signpost on that road. Or maybe they have forgotten that Badagri is still Lagos or Nigeria. And yet the same federal government just approved the sum of $1.9 billion for the construction of a railway line that will link Kano, Dutse, Katsina to Jibia in Nigeria to Maradi in the Niger Republic. And the government quarrel when people complain. Baban Tude Hompe is the member representing Badagri Federal Constituency at the Federal House of Representatives. Why Senator Solomon O. Adeola is a senator representing Lagos West Senatorial District. One wonder what type of repre representation they are giving at the National Assembly when the busiest road in their constituency is not motorable. And also, what is the Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawonlu doing to alleviate the suffering of not just the Lagos State Government workers that have been posted to work in Badagri, but the teeming population living in that area? I be Badagri, not be Lagos, I ask again. I will therefore advocate that the Lagos State Government should not wait until there is a governor who is an indigenous of Badagri to fix the road in Badagri. Just like Ekbe had to wait for Ambody, who is an indigenous of Ekbe, to fix the roads in Ekbe. Lagos also should understand that the more infrastructures they build in this area, the more they are able to decongest the housing need in Lekki and Aja, and then the city centre. And then people will move to these areas. The federal government should understand that they intentionally create division and segregation amongst the masses in the country when they fast track road and rail project in the northern part while abandoning the ones in the south. And that no matter how many times they amend the Company and Allied Matters Act for the ease of doing business and then beautify Abuja, if the gateway to the southern part of the country from the West African subregion is not motorable, the country will always be seen by global businessmen as unconducive for doing business. Historic sites are a source of wealth in most countries. So let's utilize ours. Wake up, Nigeria. Wake up. Libby, that was a powerful one. It's also a sad commentary about what has become of our country. Um, earlier this week, I was reading some Chinese um, development books. And you know, one of the things that the Chinese did as a foundation to the development was to develop the coastal provinces, and then interconnect them to the hinterland. And there's a strategy behind that. It's, it's, it's not just, you know. But I, I marvel to see that our own coastal places, <laughs> the port, the cocoa port, the Calabar port, the port the right. Apapa, the Tinkan, mm -hmm. Badagri, have been left on their own for so long. It is, it is a shame. These are the things that will drive development. You develop those, then you interconnect back from Sokoto, Kano, from uh, Oweri, everywhere. And, and, and that because is because the big fundamental even, infrastructure. It, it even um, allows you to move goods and services from the hinterland that to the is city. It. And then people can decide to go live in this hinterland you know, while working in the city. If the interconnectivity is, is there? seamless and you know, your infrastructures are okay, I don't see why somebody cannot live in Badagri and work in VI. 
If you have to take a train from Badagri, then take worst a train. case, you take a train, one hour, 20, 15 minutes, you are, in, you are in VI. But today, even on the road, it takes you six hours on that road. That's if you are if you can maneuver. It's, 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 it's such take a Take a train or take uh, the waterways. I mean, when would life living in Nigeria be comfortable? When would people be able to move freely 60 years after? It, it, it hurts my innermost when people like us, middle-class Nigerians, the Nigerian elites, travel out of this country. You just talked about China. And it's, it's almost the same thing all over the world. Transportation um, system is diverse. You have different, you know, options. Modes, yeah. But we all go out and then come back into Nigeria and we continue with status quo. Imagine that Badagri Road. You're talking of a pregnant somebody, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's worse. It is worse. Yet these people vote. That is that is the the the. the Maybe I shall, I shall would give us a perspective. And they vote. Of, uh, where, where so who are voting? you voting no, for? The numbers are high there. Who are you <laughs> voting for? What are you voting for? Do you not have a voice in Lagos? And when the Lagos State Assembly sits, what do they talk about? If you have the districts, you have Ekpe, you have Ikeja, you have uh, uh, Ikorodu, and then you have Badagri. And of all these, Badagri is there. It's the gateway, as you have said. But it's perpetually like that. I remember when I had a, a, um, a project to do along that line. It was still the same thing. It's always been the same. They're always, always, like always constructing every day. So what's, what, what, the, what, is the, what is the benefit or dividend it's, it's, of democracy for the people of Badagri? Aisha. Uh, well, uh, there's a saying that uh, it's very difficult to wake up uh, somebody who is pretending to sleep. And, and that's, uh, that's a problem we have. So when that's you say wake up Nigerians, yeah, wake up. Nigerians are not ready to wake up. We, we want to sleep while we are sleeping. We wake up, we wake, we open our eyes and things will magically uh, be, be okay. So that is the main, uh, the main issue. The question we need to ask, who are the people that live in Badagri? You find out that it's not the elite. It's not the who is who. So they really don't care. It's about what we have right now, where there's uh, there's uh, an air route that's uh, going off between Abuja to Kaduna. Uh, the government can no longer secure the roads. Uh, the trains aren't secured anymore. So what's going to happen? The elite have simply taken uh, their business and they're going to fly. So leaving the people who are who don't have the money to fly to to fly those roads and be at the mercy of kidnappers and bandits. It's simply the same thing. When it is time to vote, they will remember that there are people in Badagri that will come out and vote. And guess what? The same people in Badagri, the, the same set of people will come in, they will vote for them, they will give them their mandate, they will not insist on this road being done. Like, like you know, people will say they don't want to waste their vote, yet they are wasting their vote, voting in people who don't have the mm -hmm. empathy, who mm -hmm. don't have integrity to do what they say they're, they're going to do. And this will, con this will continue to go on. But you know, one of the things you said that really struck me was the fact that when you said the development, uh, you know, infrastructural development is going on in the south, uh, in the north, mm -hmm. more than in the south. But then guess what? Other people from the north are saying that the, the <laughs> infrastructural <laughs> development is going on in the south and not in That's the north. Not at the end of the day, there's not uh, uh, it's not going on anywhere. <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> it's not going on anywhere. It's just we are all in the same boat, and we are facing this incompetence, and we need to do something about the incompetence. Uh, but, but, well, uh, you, you see, it's quite unfortunate, really. It's, it's really, really unfortunate. Um, you know, why those here think it's going up up there? Those up there think it's going, going up there. No, but for my, 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 my mind, mine is also be the politicians no, sowing that But mine, mine, mine really is the fact that, you know, why you have awarded a contract here and there is nothing happening on site, you have awarded another one for train construction to Niger Republic. And, and so, you know, um, and that's why you see every region wants a president, you know, they can call their own. Because it's almost as if when you are a president, you know, you, you award, you then push, to your you know, attract, side of, yeah, you know, to your contract side of to your country. sides of the country. Oui. But, but, but you see, when Gulag Jonathan was head of, uh, president, it was almost as if he was only the president of the JAWS. That South South was now in Jaws. So you, but, saw, but you, you see, see them everywhere. Pretty much but he was unable thing. to fix that same road. Pretty much the same road. thing you talked about, Lagos. When Ambode was there, he, he was made Ekpe. sure he did the roads for Ekpe. And seriously, if you go to Ekpe, Ekpe looks beautiful. Yes. I mean, to, to link Ijebode, it's just massive 
beautiful drive down. I, I, I understand I um, the Ogun State man is also starting from there like to continue. That's what we are asking for. That sort of thing, continue. But you see, it doesn't have to be an ambody that will come and do that at Ekpe. That is the problem. You we know? don't, there are no specific mandates and deliverables for these political leaders. No, no, no. I'll give you another, another, another example. Do we as a people even have a blueprint for what we want? Development in our, in our communities. That is, that is we the question. Do not. So if there are no specific mandates, it means that when I get there, I will do what I think pleases me or what will serve my political interests later on in the future, and then I, I, I leave the place. Because we do not insist on we manifestos. We do not insist on manifest. We do not even we insist on You know, you know the way manifestos campaign. come up in Nigeria? Somebody else is writing it, not the visioner. The visioner doesn't even have an input. It, it is doesn't, when he, he, he doesn't know what you have written there. It is when you are elected a governor that you now say, okay, hey, please let me put a team together. What yes. do we do? What do we do? Uh, give me a vision. <laughs> give me what we can do. What are the... Because you know? the people don't but care. The people do not... I shall... I shall... I shall... I shall... I shall, I shall, I shall in the, within the, those who are elected, even, even in normal places, organization, para starters, the moment somebody gets there at the head, if it's your tribe, then automatically it's as if everybody from that either town or that region mm -hmm. get into there. It's because of the fact that we have this nepotism. It's so ripe in our, in our country. And it, things are not based, are done based on merit. They are ba done based on who do you know. So that is the major uh, uh, problem. So that's the reason why people will want their own person to be there, even though, even if that person is not competent, just so that they'll be able to get dividends, whether it's dividends of democracy or dividends of having the person in that position in the first place. Dividends of stomach infrastructure. I wish they would replicate it, you know, in physical infrastructure. Well, it's no more news that our leaders, you know, hardly give us what we want. After the break, I shall raise these topical issues in that same line.